Ladies and gentlemen, today is an incredibly exciting day because in my hands I have the brand new X3D chip from AMD Ryzen. This is the Ryzen 7950X3D and for all intents and purposes, this should be the world's fastest gaming CPU. And this is something that we've heard time and time again, but it's not really mattered until something like this came along, the RTX 4090. Every CPU I've tested so far has seen some form of bottlenecking, even at 4K when playing on a 4090. So this is gonna be an incredibly exciting video because for the first time we're gonna be putting these two things head to head, the 7950X and the 7950X3D, and we're gonna be seeing whether we are actually getting any bottlenecking in the latest and greatest games. So place your bets now, ladies and gentlemen. Who's gonna win, the 4090, or finally, the CPU with the X3D? Let's get testing after a short word from this video's sponsor. Corsair Murals is the ultimate way to get the RGB setups of your dreams. With Murals, you can sync together your Corsair components and peripherals for a truly show-stopping display, but now you can even integrate with both Philips Hue and Nanoleaf. You can create different effects based on colors, audio, or even your gameplay thanks to monitor capture. The end result is crazy. Download Corsair IQ for free and get started with Murals today. So let's get started. And the way that this is gonna work is actually pretty straightforward. We're gonna start with our lesser CPU, the 7 950X. This is 16 cores, 32 threads, and then we're going to work up to our also 16 core, 32 thread X3D version. But this actually has a lot more cash, and this is a lot more useful for gaming. AMD are actually touting up to about 25-30% more performance in certain situations. But of course, as we know, we always need to take these numbers with a fair pinch of salt, as it's going to vary depending on the game that you play, the settings. And so let's jump straight into our first game, some Returnal, and this is running at 4K with DLSS set to balanced. This is a game that does have a little bit of compile stutter when you go to a new area, but nothing particularly crazy to be honest. I've found on 4090 it tends to actually play pretty well. But the reason I want to include this in the test is because if you look very closely at that GPU utilization, you can see we're actually leaving quite a lot on the table. And this can always be caused by a few different things, but it is usually going to be the CPU. So imagine buying an RTX 4090. I mean, imagine buying one in the first place. Imagine buying a 4090 and then feeling like you've leaving all of this performance on the table. And I think a lot of people don't realize that ray tracing, while a lot of the hardware is obviously on the GPU, it does actually put a big strain on the processor as well. So if you do want to build a properly next-gen system that can do ray tracing, not only do you need a very big, powerful graphics card, but clearly you need the best CPU possible as well. But let's press on now to some Harry Potter, shall we? Well, I suppose technically I can't call it that. Some wizarding world, because Harry's not in it, probably. Here we go, look, this is me, Patrice Plod. Great name. We go into the settings menu and here we have DLSS, this time set to quality, frame generation is off. But then in terms of graphics, we've got everything set to ultra and all of the ray tracing set to on. And actually the best way to test this is just gonna be to walk around a little bit. And I've already noticed that the CPU and GPU utilization does vary depending on where you are in the game. If you're in a place like Hogsmeade, it's very intense. But even in this arguably more mundane setting, you can see we are still limited in terms of that GPU. Not too bad here. Anyway, really between 70 and 90%, but obviously the more intense the environment, the more intense the strain on the CPU is gonna be. Let's move on now to the newest game in our suite, some Company of Heroes 3, and this is a game I've actually been hotly anticipating. It doesn't look too different to the previous versions, I'll be honest, but I'm hoping the gameplay does at least make up for that a little bit. And if you have a look at the top right corner of your screen, you can see actually in terms of bottlenecking, we're not really getting any. And I'll be honest, I am actually a little bit surprised by this. Usually games like this tend to be not that graphically demanding, shall we say, so the load is usually on the CPU. But this is quite interesting, actually. That's not what I expected to see. I mean, what happens if we turn our resolution down a bit, shall we? And yes, there you go, look, 74% GPU utilization. So again, if you had a 4090, you're playing at 1440p with the top-end Ryzen CPU until, well, today, you would actually be losing around about 20%-ish of your performance just because your CPU isn't quite up to snuff. Which is a very weird thing to say, isn't it, for something that costs about 600 pounds. But you know what? I think out of all the tests that we're gonna do today, the one people care about the most has gotta be Warzone. And so here we go, about to touch down into my usual benchmarking spots, and you can see we're getting, what's this, about 150 FPS or so, and actually we're not getting too much in the way of bottlenecking, which is 
pretty good to see actually. Let's reduce the resolution down to 1440p and have a look at the difference. And again, it's actually holding up better than I thought. There's definitely a difference. The frame rate hasn't really jumped up like you might expect, but clearly it is still a very, very playable experience. It's just if you want to have like that RTX 4090, maybe 240, aim for 360 hertz, I'm not sure that this is going to be the perfect CPU for you and this is exactly when upgrading to an X3D or maybe the best from Intel is going to give you slightly higher frames per second. And I'll be honest, I think out of all the X3D chips, this is actually the one that is potentially going to appeal to gamers the least. I know that in theory the performance of this should be the best, but something like the 7900 or maybe even the 7800 X3D is probably going to appeal to more people and if you get the same sort of performance gains versus the counter part without the 3D cache, then it's going to mean that you can actually get really high FPS gaming, but without having to spend crazy money on the top end SKU. I mean, I do feel very privileged to actually get one of these before launch. A massive thank you to eBuyer for actually helping me out and supplying this, because without you, this video wouldn't exist. So if you do want to go grab a 7950X3D, eBuyer is going to be a solid place to do it. This motherboard is the ASUS X670E Strix. E. And obviously, if you do already own a motherboard like this and you want to upgrade it with one of these X3D chips, you'll just have to make sure you download a BIOS update that should be live by the time you're watching this from the manufacturer's website. I'll just pop to the loo. <sighs> no, that's, that's too creepy to put in the video, isn't it? Imagine if there's someone actually watching this video thinking this is legitimately used toilet paper and I like to smell it. That, that would be quite something, wouldn't it? New CPU installed. Boom. Oh, it's chaos. Everyone wants to know about the rise in the CPUs. And so then, once again, here we are at 4K resolution. Our utilization seems to be around about 98%, maybe 95. It does still drop from time to time. That's not to say that it is perfect though, because as you can clearly see, when we lower it down to 1440p, our utilization is not at 100%, and it's more geared around about, what's that, about 80, 85. And again, obviously this is gonna vary depending on where you are in the game. But it is worth noting that not even, in theory, the best gaming CPU can buy can still handle 1440p with an RTX 4090 without bottlenecking at all previous result, we've actually gained an extra 23 frames a second at 1440p. That's what, about 13, 14% or so? That's nifty there. And here we are back in Hogwarts Legacy. And as you can see, we're still slightly bottlenecked actually by the CPU, which isn't something I necessarily thought I would be saying. I guess I almost don't know what I expected. I knew the performance would of course be better but it's always interesting to know how much better. I mean, seeing the difference in return, or what was that, an extra like 23 FPS? That's gonna make a huge difference, and I do hope that something like the uh, 7900X3D still sees very similar performance. But it definitely is very interesting that there still isn't like this Hail Mary CPU that will be able to cope with anything and everything. But obviously I'd also like to stress that this is with a 4090. I think if you're running something like a 4070 Ti, 4080, or of course a 7900 XTX, then this is pretty much gonna be the perfect pairing, especially if you go for AMD and you get smart access memory. Let's do a little benchmark though and see exactly what FPS we get. 107 frames a second. So that is actually quite a big improvement actually. Bearing in mind before we went from 90 frames a second to now 107 and 46 on the 1% to 54. So that is gonna give you a much smoother experience. I mean, whether it's gonna be so much smoother that if you already own one of the 7000 series chips that it's going to be worth upgrading. But clearly, if you are going to go for a brand new AMD system, then you really should be looking at the X3D chips if you're serious about high-end graphics cards and getting the most amount of FPS possible. And moving swiftly on to what was always a little bit of a wild card, Company Heroes 3, and this actually cost me more of my evening because I had to redo my tests with both CPUs because I didn't believe what I saw, but sure enough, it is accurate. We're actually seeing slightly higher FPS on the X version over the X3D, and I think realistically it is a bit of a draw because you are getting slightly higher 1% lows on the X3D, but this is a clear example that not every single game is going to benefit from the extra 3D vCache. So while you might get some really big gains. Others like this may be more or less the same and might not be worth the extra money. Every game is different. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is the test that you've been waiting for. Max settings, Call of Duty Warzone, DLSS at 4K. Are we going to get any bottlenecking? Let's run to my little benchmarking area. 
And you can see we're pretty much around about, what's that, about 95, 97% on the GPU. So this looks very promising, actually, I have to say. 165 FPS, that is actually the same as what we had before, 166 before. Let's lower it down to 1440p and see if that makes a difference. And yes, it does. We have now increased our frame rate, not by as much as I would have thought. We went from 177 FPS before to 183. So I think this does show that actually the CPU is going to vary in different titles. It's not actually going to make such a drastic difference as you might expect. So there you are then, X versus non-X. Which is better? Well, in a move surprising absolutely nobody, it is clearly the X versions. So clearly, if you're looking to build or buy a gaming PC in 2023, then you should strongly consider the Ryzen platform. If you think we've got the performance of these now, plus all the upgradability later, then I think the platform as a whole is just much stronger than what we have on Intel. Having said that though, I think Intel is probably gonna to prove to be a cheaper option once you sort of consider everything at play. But as I say, it's all gonna depend on the exact graphics card that you're going for. Don't overspend on your CPU because if it's not going to be bottlenecking anyway, why bother having a really good one? I'd absolutely love to hear your thoughts on this though. Have the X3D chips tickled your fancy? Is this finally what it takes for you to upgrade your platform? Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this video though. Get yourself subscribed for more just like this. And of course, if you do want to check out current pricing on anything featured in this video, you can find it linked down below with my Amazon affiliate links. And while you're down there, why not check out Corsair Murals? Having a fully integrated setup has never been easier. Just download IQ for free, enable third-party integrations like Philips Hue, Nanoleaf, and Asus Aura, and then just pick a theme. Personally, I love going for the all white look with maybe a slight blue edge, but you can go as crazy or as calm as you like. Check out Mirrors today for free with the link down below. But thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one.